And so it happened this time. The debtor's friend came to help. He knew the debtor well. He knew him to be short-sighted. He thought him foolish to have gotten himself into such a predicament. Nevertheless, he wanted to help because he loved him. I will pay the debt if you will free the debtor of his contract so that he can keep his possessions and not go to prison. You demanded justice. Though he cannot pay you, I will do so. You will have been justly dealt with and can ask no more. It would not be just. If I pay your debt, will you accept me as your creditor? Yes. <laughs> the debt to me, and I will set the terms. It will not be easy, but it will be possible. I will provide a way. You need not go to prison. And so it was that the creditor was paid in full. He had been justly dealt with. No contract had been broken. The debtor, in turn, had been extended mercy. Both laws stood fulfilled. Because there was a mediator, justice had claimed its full share, and mercy was fully satisfied. Each of us lives on a kind of spiritual credit. One day the account will be closed and a settlement demanded. However casually we may view it now, when that day comes and the foreclosure is imminent, we will look around in restless agony for someone, anyone, to help us. And by eternal law, mercy cannot be extended, save there is one who is both willing and able to assume our debt, pay the price, and arrange the terms for our redemption. Unless there is a mediator, unless we have a friend, the full weight of justice, untempered, unsympathetic, must fall upon us. There is a redeemer, a mediator, who stands both willing and able to appease the demands of justice and extend mercy to those who are penitent. For he offereth himself a sacrifice for sin to answer the ends of the law and to all those who have a broken heart and contrite spirit. and unto none else can the ends of the law be answered.